Um, hi everyone, I'm Emery from ByteDance, and today I'm going to update um, our latest development of BPF QDisk. And so first I'll introduce the background of this work and some motivation and how we do it. And then I'll um, tell you how we built BPF QDisk using StruckOps and to make um, BPF QDisk more performant and easy to use. We made several uh, changes to BPF and I'll explain that. And finally, I'll show you three examples and some evaluation. So first, the package scheduler in the last kernel is being done through queuing discipline or queue disk. A queue disk is often written in uh, a kernel module, which implements a fixed um, functionalities, which is as, um, so it, uh, it normally implements a specific scheduling algorithm, although it might have some um, tunable attributes. And if you want to achieve some sophisticated uh, policies, normally you, what we, you will do is to combine multiple QDisks together. And some pain points of using existing QDisks are because um, you have to write QDisk as kernel modules. So if you want to change something, it's um, rather inconvenient because um, there is a safety concern. If there's bugs in your um, QDisk, it could cr crash the kernel and it's being compiled against a specific kernel version. So it's not easy to deploy it across different places. And so it's not very good for um, faster innovation. And the second um, pain point is that, so because each uh, QDisk only has a uh, specific functionality, so you have to try to mix and match different QDisk together to, to um, achieve specific um, scheduling policies. So it's not that easy to use some, sometimes. So our goal in this work is to develop a flexible and easy to use QDisk. And our, our, our main idea is to use BPF for the developer to implement the core logic, which is the um, in queue that decides where the an incoming SQBK buff to be placed into the internal data structure and use BPF to implement the queue, which determine which um, SK buff in the data structure that will be the queue and also the timing of that queue. And to make it easy to use, we want to implement the most mundane part of the queue disk for the user. And that will be in the BPF queue disk infrastructure so that you don't need to write a whole um, kernel module again. All right, so actually this will be, so this is still in development and this will be the uh, eighth version of the RFC patch set. And in the past we developed BPF queue disk um, by introducing a new um, BPF program types and we found that that's actually non-ideal. So in this new patch set, we try to use StruckOps. So StruckOps is a uh, BPF program that allows the user to replace a kernel function pointers. Um, actually not the kernel function pointers, but a structure which comprises uh, many kernel function pointers with user-defined BPF programs. And some benefits of this approach is that um, we'll get support of um, BPF link automatically, which is a new attachment model. And also it's easier to extend supports for um, different ops in QDIS ops. So for example, um, now we only support in queue to queue or init reset, but in the future, we, if we want to support more um, ops, we can easily do that with struct ops without explicitly uh, touching the UAPI. And finally, uh, by using struct ops, it gives a, us a, a better user experience. So in V7, we're introducing an additional layer of, of abstraction between the QDisk function and the user UAPI. And that's, so we need to teach the developer a new thing and that's not easy. And once we commit to that, that's not easy to change. So uh, in short, that's not a good approach, but with BPS struct ops, the user or the developer will see the same interface, the in queue, the queue, those different functions will see the same uh, function prototypes. So it's easier for them to program because it's just like the existing queue disk, but now with uh, BPF. And let me show you some of the uh, 
details of design. So in QDisk Ops, there are many different um, function pointers. And to make it easy for a user, we only require them to implement um, in Q and the Q. And the ID here is just a string like um, to um, represent this QDisk. And we make uh, init, reset, and peak function optional. And so it simplifies the development because now you just have two core logics to implement. And the other thing we make it, um, make the development easy is to um, make the classful QDisk operations uh, predefined by us. And we implement that using QDisk class hash. So user don't need to implement this again. And to make it easy to use, we made some changes to BPF. Um, we made three changes, and let me um, show you. So first, let's consider the in queue function of a queue disk. So the in queue function takes a, a pointer to an escape of, and then in queue that to the internal data structure. And this escape of is actually solely owned by the queue disk, and if not being in queued, must be dropped. So it actually matched the um, reference k pointer semantic in BPF. However, the existing way to acquire a reference KP, uh, k pointer in BPF often is done uh, through using kfunk with kf acquire to get a um, BPF reference object. And this is less than ideal because if you use a kfunk this way, for example, you name it like uh, BPF skb acquire. If the user can call it multiple times, that, that means you will be able to get multiple reference in a QDisk to the same escape buff, and this will cause problems because now you have multiple process, uh, references to the same escape buff. So instead of using a KFUNC, we teach struct ops um, programs to uh, automatically acquire a reference uh, pointer and we are using the stop um, function for this, and this is the same approach to the link that I attach here. So, if we, uh, so basically, now um, a reference k pointer will be auto automatically acquired through the first um, argument, and once being enqueued, that will become a non-owning um, reference, and that cannot be enqueued into other data structure. So if the incoming escape off is not being enqueued, the user can drop this escape off using the new introduced um, BP K funk called BPFQ disk SKB drop. And so that's for enqueue. And the second thing we teach BPF is for dequeue. So now let's look at the dequeue function. So the dequeue function actually release and re reference to, to a escape off through return, and this is also, um, the current BPF does not have support this semantics. So we teach the BPF verifier to allow StratOps program to be able to um, basically leak a reference to an uh, to a pointer. And we do some checking to make sure we are leaking the right um, K pointer. And the third thing, and I think that's the most important thing is to be able to enqueue escape of directly to BPF graph collections. And this is for the performance of um, BPF QDisk. So on the left-hand side of the listing, I have the sample code for a QDisk in V7. And as you can see, because uh, in the past, we cannot enqueue an escape of into BPF collection directly. So what we'll need to do is actually allocate a new BPF objects dynamically, and then do K pointers exchange into that local objects, and then we enqueue that local objects into a um, into a queue, which can be a BPF list or a BPF arbitrary. But here we use the list for example. So, but our goal because um, so this approach will actually introduce a uh, memory allocation in the fast pass, and that's not ideal. So our goal is to be able to directly enqueue and escape off into, into BPF list or arbitrary, uh, like 
the, the one we show, show, showed on the right. So in order to do that, we teach BPF several things. First, we want the BPF be able to um, recognize the graph nodes in kernel BPF, BTF, and then we allow adding kernel objects to collection because right now we only allow, um, excuse me, we only allow um, user or local objects to be added to collections. So that's the second thing. And finally, we need to introduce a new um, notion or reintroduce a notion of exclusive ownership nodes. So, in, so why do we need to have this ex exclusive ownership nodes notion? That's because um, a specific patch set, so, or because insufficient uh, space in SKBuff. So as you know, like many kernel data structure has been optimized for years and they cannot, the, the layout of the memory cannot be easily changed. And if we look at XKBuff, the um, list hat or RP node sits at the union at off offset zero. And the largest uh, member is RP node. But if we look at the RB node definition in BPF, yeah, it's actually larger than that. It has an extra owner field. And the reason for that is in BPF, we want to support shared ownership of BPF objects. So we need to have a way to safely share the ownership in order to prevent some um, unsafe um, operations on that BPF node. And that's why we have this extra pointer. So, but that means this um, BPF RB node kernel will simply not fit into the existing SK, SK buff. So, and to solve this problem, because we only we also don't want to have shared ownership of an, of an SK buff. So, what we did is to reintroduce the notion of um, ex exclusive ownership. And what we did is we introduced BPF RB exclusive node and list exclusive node, and they're simply just RB nodes and list head. And this is just to tell the BPF. So this will be compiled into BTF and tell the BPF ver verifier their exclusive node. And in the verification, we'll check that they cannot uh, coexist with um, existing RB nodes or list node or ref counts so that people will not be able to get multiple references. And we allow those two uh, these, these new types to be at the same offset, basically means they can be a, a, in a union. And in the helper, uh, in the KFUNC, so that we can, what now we know this will be exclusively owned by a queue or RB tree, we can skip the owner check um, safely. So this is the way we um, support adding SK buff into BPF collection. And now, now that I show you three uh, changes to BPF and how we do BPF QDisk using Star Ops, let me show you three examples um, of BPF QDisk. So the first one is simple. It's just a BPF FIFO QDisk. And let me just show you the skeleton. Um, without the function body. So first in this um, code here, we define a queue on line four. And because the BPF verifier um, will require you to have a lock to protect the FIFO from concurrent access, you'll, so you'll need to define a um, lock. So that's in line three. And this private B is actually these two um, entries will be viewed as a, as a map. And we use content K pointers to tell the verifier that this, um, the objects in this BPF list will actually comes from the kernel. And, and then we define in Q and the Q function, and then basically pass the uh, definition to the Q this ops to tell the um, BPF. So that's the structure of the of the FIFO um, Q disk. And now let's look at the body of those two functions. So in BPF FIFO in Q function, 
So it's quite simple. We just acquire the lock to pro that protects the FIFO, do push back to the list, and then unlock and return success. And in the queue, same, we just acquire the lock and simply pop uh, from the list and unlock. And if there is no node, we just simply return null. Otherwise, we will return the pointer to the escape path. So now you don't need to write a whole kernel module just to achieve this simple like um, kill disk. And now let me show you some of the performance. Oh no. And this is the um, user space code of how we use this um, BPF kill disk. So now here we are using BPF skeleton. So we simply open the skeleton and then attach the struct up, pro uh, struct up program and do some tests, which basically um, just send some traffic to a, uh, to a loopback device and then, and then check if we receive the correct number of packets. And finally, before um, returning, we just destroy the link, which means we detach the um, BPF program. So this is simple. And let me show you some performance number of um, BPF QDisk. So the gray one is the native P54 fast QDisk. And the graph shows you the throughput of the QDisk on a loopback device. And the red bar is actually the older BPF um, QDisk we were, we were developing that does not support adding escape off directly to BPF collections. Now that we support that, uh, we can see there is a 7.6% um, of throughput improvements. And now I would say the performance of BPF QDisk is comparable to native ones. And now let me show you the second example. So the th second and third example will um, the point of those two examples to tell you that um, there is more um, opportunities for a new use case and optimization. So let's now considering um, FQ with uh, EDT. So EDT means earliest departure rate, so which is a um, rate limiter written, written in um, BPF that basically just time, give each escape of and time, time spent stamp. And this time stamp is calculated by dividing the length of the escape of by a rate and by accumulating the time stamp. Um, we can, so that time stamp will tell the FQQ disk to decue that escape of at a uh, given, at that given time stamp. So, so that's how it achieves rate limiting. But one problem of um, EDT with FQ is that the rate limiter is not aware of uh, packet loss in the FQ. So what will happen is that since the EDT will keep uh, tagging packets with the um, timestamp, and the problem is that the throughput will, will because it's not, uh, the rate limiter is not aware, aware of packet lots, so it will keep accumulating the delay, and so you will not be able to make up the um, throughput loss. And to compensate that, we can use BPF QDisk instead. So here, I replace the FQ with BPF um, QDisk, and so that we can communicate with the rate limiter using a BPF map to tell it that how many packets has been lost. So please subtract, subtract those delay from the timestamp so that we can keep sending, keep um, utilizing the, um, the throughput. And here are some numbers. So here we set the rate limit of the EDT to 100 megab megabits per second. And in the FQ, we just randomly drop packets and under different like rates. And you'll see without 
compensating this packet loss, the throughput will drop dramatically. And with this compensation information available, we'll be able to compensate most of the um, throughput loss. So this is just one uh, example. And the third example will show you how we use uh, BPF um, QDisk with MQ. So in this scenario, we're considering using MQ with uh, network emulator. So MQ is a um, special QDisk that basically prevents contention on a root QDisk lock by breaking that, um, by distributing, distributing that lock to um, different hardware queues. And that emulator is another queue disk that for users to, that's for users to simulate some common network behaviors like packet loss, reordering, that kind of stuff. And one of the models that's being used to simulate network loss is a, um, is a, is using a state machine. And in that state machine, there, there is a good state and a uh, bad state. And under a good state, the user can specific, specify a specific um, rate of packet loss. And under a bad state, you can set another rate of uh, packet loss. And there's also different uh, possibility for the state to transition to e uh, one and each other. And that's how that model works. However, if you want to simulate, uh, if you want to use MQ with net em network emulator while maintaining a global view of the network, currently that's not possible because each network emulator queue disk will work independently. So that means we are not be able to simulate that scenario um, accurately. And to solve this problem, we actually can use BPF queue disk by maintaining that state machine um, global state machine in a BPF map. And so that's what, what we did. And that just show you some um, evaluation. So as you can see, if you try to approach this specific scenario using existing methods, that's either just mounting a simple, uh, just mounting one network emulator and or using MQ, but several network emulator Independ working in independently, you'll see you will not be able to get the same result as we do here. So this is just another use case to show you how this can have more opportunity because of the ease of um, communication. And just another point that by using MQ with N net network emulation, we'll be able to reduce the contention on the QDisk locks so that we see um, lower CPU utilizations. All right, so to summarize, we're developing BPF QDisks now using Stroke Ops with some proposed change to uh, BPF semantics. And we think BPF QDisks will greatly simplify QDisk development. And as, you, as I show you in the second and third example, cross components communication uh, through BPF maps or collections I think that will open new opportunities for new applications and optimizations. And finally, I th uh, we made the performance of BPF QDisk comparable to native QDisk now. And there is a link to the work in progress and which I should be able to send out maybe in a month. And, but feel free to take a look. And I noticed that um, some of the um, approach that I some of the change that I did is maybe overcomplicated something, but I will fix them before sending a string.